Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Practical IT. I'm doing something a little bit different today and we're going to install the evaluation version of Windows Server 2022 in Proxmox. So there is one extra step you've got to do in order to make this work and that is to get the drivers installed or else it doesn't recognize that you've got a virtual hard drive. So let's go ahead and get started. I booted this virtual machine up and we are at the select edition screen. We're going to select the standard evaluation desktop edition and go ahead and click next. Agree to the licensing. We're going to do custom and then we've got to load driver. Click browse. And then we want to navigate to our virtual I.O. CD-ROM, virtual CD. And we want Windows 2022. And say OK. And so it has the Vert I.O. SCSI pass-through. And we'll say Next. And we'll get this loaded up. And we can go ahead and continue through. Now I did do an install yesterday, but I messed up a little bit and I did not select the desktop experience version. So we're going to delete all the old partitions and then go ahead and power through this and see what we end up with next. All right, we're coming down the home stretch of this install. Restart now. We'll go ahead and close that. We're going to let that skip. I'm going to go into options. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to go into hardware and I'm going to eject the ISO for Windows Server. And we'll see about getting into server 2022 for the first time. All right, now we're making progress again. Let's jump this up to a full or larger console. Enter a password. When they match. And let's see what we can do with this. All right, so. Control Alt Delete. To kick this off. And once we can get in this and do a little bit of basic config, we will go ahead and connect to this with RDP and then we can have a true full screen experience with this. Okay, it's doing its normal get things set up sequence. And hopefully we'll have a desktop soon. We can launch settings just to see what they might have done with this. I don't really expect it to be too different from Windows 11. Uh, it actually still has the Windows 10 style to it. Oh, yeah, it's not going to do updates because we've got no connection available. We need to install some other drivers first. So we'll go ahead and open up File Explorer. And we've got our Vert IO disk still in. And we will run the Vert IO Windows 
Win Guest Tools. Let's see. Windows Installer Package. So we'll run that one. And get this installed. Next. Accept the terms. Install. And we can monitor the progress by opening up Device Manager. And we should see some of the red X's disappear. If it wants to load. There we go. And this should get us connected to the internet and it should get us some other drivers and things installed that we need in order to make use of this in Proxmox. So, still installing floppy drive controllers by default. <laughs> Go figure. Let's see where we're at. Part of my reason for wanting to install this is just to do a little bit of a comparison and see where things are going to differ between Windows Server 2022 and something like Zential. I am curious about playing with Samba Active Directory. And this will give me, you know, for the, the evaluation period, this will give me the, the uh, ability to compare the behavior between the two implementations of Active Directory, the Microsoft implementation and the open source Samba implementation. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this again and I'll come back once this has finished up running this installer. Okay, we have network available now. So we'll click yes to this. And we are going to continue through the install. And we just want to install all of these. I am happy <laughs> having full functionality for this evaluation period. And we'll see. We'll see where things take us. This should be should be interesting. I don't know how long I will keep the video rolling but I want to complete this install and then we will probably do further exploration of Windows Server 2022 in the next video. Okay that is finished. So we've got network, we've got generic monitor and that is good. So do the vert IO win guest tools as well. And what that does. And then we can shut this down and reboot it after making a minor change to enable uh, guest tools and that will give us additional options for connecting to this VM on a uh, for the purposes of Proxmox. So once we get this done and restarted, we'll go ahead and wrap this video up and then we'll, as I said, do further exploration in the next video. Um, Okay, so can we just exit this with the, all right, Alt F4 still <laughs> lets you quit Windows applications. We're going to go ahead and shut down, shut down, make our change in, in Proxmox, and then we'll start it back up and just 
do a quick verification. Okay, we've got our VM shut down. We are going to come in, I believe it's in options, and it is, and we want QEMU guest agent. And we can say okay to that. And we should be good to also to eject our vert IO virtual ISO image. And we can go ahead and get rid of one of the CD-ROM units. And this should, if we come into console, this should give us, upon starting, this should give us some additional console options, at least one, which should be Spice. Uh, but I may have missed some configuration somewhere along the line. That may prevent us from doing that, but we will get this booted back up. I'm going to kick off Windows updates and just let this run and then it will be ready for the next video when we start doing some additional exploration around the new system. Ideally, you would run this on a beefier VM. Um, I am in a state of transition with my home network and home lab. There we go. And so um, this may not be ideal hardware to run it on, but it's what we're going to use. And already I think this is working a little bit better than what we saw in the initial boot. So it'll be interesting to play with this and just see where some of the differences are. The newest server, uh, Windows server I'm using in my day job is server 2019. Uh, so I don't expect a huge difference uh, between 19 and 22. Um, but we'll we'll see what we can see when uh, this is all set up. I do want to see if we can change the resolution. But I will likely keep this going for most of the the uh, evaluation period. Got 180 days. Um, let's do 1440 by 900. It gives me a little more real estate to work with. And then jump up to this. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Um, fourteen forty by nine hundred. We'll leave it here for the moment. Uh, the big thing I wanted to do is just do a couple of housekeeping things right there see what my notifications say pretty normal stuff so all is well here we've got server manager still loading up and that's fine everything looks pretty similar to what I'm used to seeing and I'll go ahead and close that and we'll kick off updates and that'll be that for this video so and we've got that checking for updates all right so um, I don't use a lot of windows but you see a lot of, of people that are Windows users comparing to 
Linux and uh, bringing their own biases into the mix. Now, I've been using Windows on and off for more than 30 years. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of the platform. And Windows Server, honestly, is one of the better products in, in the Windows ecosystem. Um, am I going to use it at home in a virtual lab for um, more than an evaluation? No, probably not. Linux serves my needs for everything I do, and honestly, I find it to be better suited for a heterogeneous environment. If you are strictly running Windows, then sure, you may want to run Windows Server. And more power to you for that. Uh, since I have Linux, Windows, and Mac OS devices on my network, I want something that's going to work with all of them and give me options. And options that don't necessarily cost extra to implement. So I do tend to run evaluations of different versions of Windows and Windows Server and it can be fun for a minute. It's uh, like I said not something that I necessarily will pursue for my own uses. Now your mileage may vary I am trying to be open-minded enough in the channel and the videos I produce to bring a little bit of everything to you uh, while still staying true to my base in the Linux and Unix like ecosystem. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up this video. We're going to get these updates installing and in the next video we will peruse through some of the uh, different features and settings available in Windows Server 2022. Until then, thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't taken a moment to do so, it would be great if you'd go down, hit like button, subscribe if you're not already, and leave some comments. What do you want to see in the Windows Server 2022 series that I will be doing on the channel? Let me know. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.